Two years ago, I studied Latin and realized that I'd been diagnosed with cancer. Or at least it, it felt like I had to study Latin to understand what the doctor who just examined me was saying. He said, you have testis cancer. I said, I have to test what to get what? <laughs> no, 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 you have, you have testis cancer. You, testicular cancer. Testis is Latin, it means testicular. And I, I, I don't know if it were because of my obvious Latin look. <laughs> he felt the need to tell me in Latin what the problem was. And actually, as a comedian through the last 16 years, I found it quite ironic that he told me I might die in a language that's dead. <laughs> uh. But this little Latin session actually became, became quite symbolic to me and what I experienced the following one and a half years. Um, as I realized how hard it is for people uh, to talk to people who have a serious illness. And it especially, you know, just, not just for you and me, but also for doctors. And it really became clear to me when <clears throat> the cancer spread to my lung. Then even my wife and mother became awkward about the communication with me. My, my wife withdrew and, and held back, and she didn't want to ask me too many questions of how I felt. Um, she was afraid to put too much stress on me. And my, my mom, she was just like, she was a serious, seriously uh, concerned mom. Uh, no one wants to see their child sick. So she, she was too uncomfortable about calling me. And... Um, <sighs> And, um, and um, so we decided that I should just call her uh, when I had the energy to do it. Um, but if, if there's someone you really want to be in touch with when you're sick, it's, it's your mom and your wife. You want a thousand questions a day, and you want a thousand missed calls from your mom a day. You know? and, and I heard from a lot of my friends, they say, yeah, we didn't want to contact you. We were afraid we we're going to cry or that you were going to cry. Or we, 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 we weren't certain that, our, our, that what we said would be profound enough. And my advice to anyone who knows, anyone who's seriously ill, there's, there's nothing you can say or do uh, that's wrong. The only wrong you can do is it's doing nothing at all. And just the small, I'm thinking of you. It's, it's, it's enough. It doesn't have to be long and poetic. And my mom doesn't have a mobile or a computer, so she couldn't text me or, or send an email. But, you know, we all have, except for my mom, <laughs> this little device here. And if you know someone who's ill, you know, this is, you know, accessible 24-7. Send them a text, an email, Facebook, Twitter, and let them know that you are thinking of them and their loved ones. And, you know, I remember when I was, uh, it wasn't always, I, I got hundreds, luckily, of messages from friends and family. Um, and it wasn't always I had the strength to read them. But on good days, you know, when I turned on my phone, uh, hearing these messages coming in, seeing them, you know, it really kept me going and made my day. And, and especially the ones that made me laugh. Those few moments where, where I laughed, I, f I forgot that I was ill. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had long hair. I had to go through chemotherapy and lost my hair. I had long hair for 20 years. It was my brand. It was my, it was my image. And I got a, a text from a stand-up comedian, one of my colleagues, with a picture of him wearing a long-haired wig, <laughs> saying, don't worry, my friend. I'll do your gigs for you. <laughs> and of course, keep the money. I worked at a radio station at the moment, and my boss came around with six chocolate balls. I'd had my testicle removed, and uh, <laughs> he thought I needed a replacement. <laughs> and they were all different sizes, as he didn't know my exact size. <laughs> when, um, when, I, I, when I was uh, declared cancer-free, which is one year and eight days ago, uh, I posted... Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, and I posted a, on my, uh, my Facebook enthusiastically, like, yeah, I'm, I beat cancer, it is so great. And I got 4,000 likes, 4,000 people liked my update. And I showed it to my nurse, look at that, 4,000 people liked my update. And she just looked at it and said, well, you, you have 50,000 fans. <laughs> Does that mean that 46,000 is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, and, I, I, and I texted, I texted all my friends and family, 150 to be exact, and I said, yeah, I'm back, I'm alive, I beat cancer. And 149 wrote back, that's amazing, that's amazing, we love you, we love life. Except for one guy, my friend Uffe from my university. He, uh, he wrote, oh, dear Gail, this is so great, good news. I myself have been ill lately. I've had a little bit of fever. <laughs> and I've also been dizzy, but I'm all right now. <laughs> and I just booked tickets to Mexico. It's going to be great. I was like, I had to go back. And so what was it? I wrote to Uffe. And he was, yeah, I've been struggling, fighting against cancer for the last one and a half years. I beat it. I might be uh, mentally, physically, and uh, financially broke, but who cares? I'm alive. I've been a little bit dizzy. <laughs> but it just shows, I mean, these four examples shows how extreme it can be. And still, you know, they all meant well. Ufa meant well. His text might have been a bit off, but it certainly <laughs> made me glad. And, and it made me laugh, for sure. <laughs> but my point is, Ufa did something. And, and I see, I have my phone out, and I see you have your phones out. And I'm done here in a, in a few seconds. And when I'm done, I want you to text or call a person who needs to hear from you. <laughs> and remember, you can't do or say anything wrong. The only wrong you can do is not doing anything. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.